Well, I mentioned yesterday how excited I was to finally be able to talk about this book called Don't Tell. It's subtitled Finding Home After Family Betrayal. Kathy Isaac is the author. It's a book about the story of a young woman named Joni Brasso, and uh, we'll have the opportunity to, to meet her in just a couple of minutes here. But, Kathy, let me welcome you to the program. I, I honestly forget how we first connected, except it was, I think that you had sent me a portion of the book and said, would you take a look at this and think about endorsing it? And I immediately decided I needed to. It's a well-written book. It's an amazing story. And I guess here we are on NBL, finally, with the opportunity to talk about it. But uh, welcome, first of all. How are you? And, and tell us, you know, about the release of the book. Is it is it available now? Is it is it something that people can get their hands on already? Yeah, thank you, Neil. Um, I... I'm, I'm so happy to be able to be um, on NBL today and, and let everybody know that, yes, the, the book is widely available online at um, Amazon, Chapters, Indigo, Barnes & Noble, um, and should be available if you ask at local bookstores as well. Um, yeah, it's exciting to be here with Joni as well and to share her, her story, her journey um, to meeting Jesus and... Um, the wonderful life that he had for her after that. Well, it's just absolutely incredible what some people have to endure in their life, and Joni's story is altogether heartbreaking. Let me ask you, I know that she's from Chicago, Illinois. You're from St. Catharines, Ontario, and the question has to be yeah. asked, how do you even know Joni? How did this how did, how did it transpire that you two got to know each other? Um, yeah, I was going to a church here in St. Catharines, and our pastor had been from um, Judson Church in Chicago. And so we went on a youth trip, and they needed some chaperones. So um, my husband and I went along, and um, we worked with um, the Judson Church, and Joni happened to be um, being the director of Camp um, 412 at the time, and um, that's how I met Tony. Just a chance meeting at a camp somewhere. It's amazing. It was just a chance <laughs> meeting. Yeah, yeah. Amazing how God works. Because you ended up writing a book. And by the way, have you authored other books? I haven't. No. Um, as soon as I met Tony, I knew that this is a story that needed to be told. And um, you know, all those years ago, it was early two thousand something. Um, all those years ago, told her like you need to tell this story because. You have gone through so much. Yeah. I don't think there's a single person who hasn't gone or that you couldn't touch through your story. And, um, you know, we, we became fast friends and connected over the years. And um, finally last year, or no, 2018, I guess, uh, COVID kind of has taken a year <laughs> I away. know, it's like it disappeared, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I had gone out to, to visit her and said, Tony, really, you're, you're ill and you need to get the story out. And she said, I, you know, I'd love to, but I've never written a book. And I said, you know what? God provided everything I needed when I um, built a well. When he gives you a project, he will give you the resources you need, so I will write your story for you. And, um, yeah, that's well, it's an incredible kind thing. of how it started. I mentioned the title, Don't Tell, Finding Home After Family Betrayal, but describe it in your own words. We're going to meet Joni here in just a second. How do you describe the book when somebody says, oh, you wrote a book? What's it about? Um, yeah, so basically um, at 14, Joni finds out that she's pregnant and um, has her father's child at 15. Um, and that just kind of sets off a whirlwind of mental health issues and um, just a, a firestorm of events in her life. And um, when she meets Jesus, that is where her story really begins. Um, God just changes her life and um, gives her all the desires of her heart, everything that she had spent her whole life looking for. Um, she gets that and so much more. You know, we just celebrated Father's Day recently, and one of the realities about Father's Day is that some people don't have fond memories of Dad. Uh, maybe Dad was completely 
absent. He may have passed away. There's that. But, you know, he may have been emotionally absent. In some cases, he was physically present, but he was abusive uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, sometimes sexually. And it's really hard for people. I've, for whatever reason, Mother's Day seems to be easier on some, not all, obviously. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, even in taking phone calls, you see the ease with which people recall fond memories of mom. It doesn't come quite as easy with dad. And I think that people have some very painful memories. Probably nobody more than Joni Brousseau, and yet that's the miracle of what God did in her life. So we have an opportunity you know, to kind of dig into that. And I'm grateful, Kathy, that you not only wrote the book, but reached out to me so that we can talk about it here on MBL. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's welcome Joni to the conversation here. And Joni, thank you for being willing to tell your story. Thanks for sharing it with Kathy so she can write it. Thanks for being here on NBL. And she mentioned that you've struggled with some health issues, so I know it's not been easy for you to join us, but I'm very grateful to have you with us today. And by the way, happy birthday, because I know you had a, a birthday recently. Yes, <laughs> 61 years old. Oh, you know, I wasn't even going to ask. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> wow, I'm only 60. I feel like uh, like a kid next to you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I, I obviously don't know you anywhere near as well as Kathy does, but I did have a brief opportunity to talk to you before a conversation today, and I... I hear a lightness in your voice. Kathy, I think you'd affirm that, right? That there's a freedom in her voice. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah. That, she's, she's just such a joy and yeah. contagious. And it's hard to comprehend based on all you've been through. Um, Joni, we're going to hear some of the details of what you've been through in the next little while here on MBL. But, you know, our, our, the purpose of doing these conversations on Wednesdays is to put the spotlight on what Jesus has been doing in and through his church. We are the church. Jesus has been working in your life now for a really long time, but there was a time you didn't even know him. Um, Why even tell this story? It's a story of pain, but help me understand why you would even decide to to bring it out, because it, it is so painful. In some ways, you know, you might be embarrassed about some of the details or whatever. Why did you choose to agree to let Kathy write your story, and why are you here today? Why are you willing to do this? Well, I just felt like it was a story that needed to be told and that it would touch people's lives. So many people are hurting and have loss of hope. And my hope is that I can give them hope through the, through the book. Um, my favorite uh, scripture is Jeremiah 29, 11. Um, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans to give you a hope and a future and that has been true in my life well thank god that he revealed that truth to you because i think there was a time where you were pretty confused about whether or not god even existed or if he did if he cared about the situation you were going through because what you went through was absolutely incredible um the book talks about you being literally raped by your father And then having that child, do you think you placed that baby for adoption? Is that correct? Yes, it is. And I used to pray to the Lord every night. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to take. Please let me die before I wake. I pray the Lord my soul to take. And when he didn't take me, I didn't believe in him. It's understandable, obviously, that you're saying that, but it's hard to listen to. Kathy, I'm sure you'd agree with that. And let me ask for a second, Kathy, as you wrote the story, there had to be times where it was kind of hard to imagine that what she's even talking about happened, right? I mean, because it's it's not yeah, it, typical. It's not typical, and it's a, it's, it's a very difficult read um, because in the beginning the the, the subject and the topic the beginning yeah um but and yet in the same hand so many people have have gone through similar things you know there's there's brokenness in the world everybody has suffered through um you know if it's not your sin uh it's the sin of somebody else can affect you as well and um you know, this book is about brokenness, redemption, and renewal. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, so all of us, even though it's not the same story, we can really relate um, to the brokenness that Joni felt. Yeah. And a minute ago, Joni, I heard you say that 
It sounded like you jumped in and said at the beginning, like it's a hard story to read at the beginning, right? But then Jesus yes. enters the picture, and everything changes for his glory. Praise God, right? I mean, yes. thank God what you went through is not what you're still going through, I think is a, another way to say that. But um, let's do this. I want, I want to dig, I want to go back, I do, if it's okay, Joni, you want to go back to the past yeah. and hear a little bit about your childhood, because it will set the stage for just how miraculous God's work is and what he brought you through. Uh, so we'll take a break here, and we'll be back in just a moment. Our program today is uh, sponsored by each and every one of our advertising partners, including Cornerstone Bookshop, where I'm going to encourage you to try to get a copy of the book if you can. But it's called Don't Tell, from Kathy Isaac, I-S-A-A-C, same as the biblical spelling of the name Isaac. Kathy Isaac, author of the book, in which she tells Joni Brousseau's story. It's subtitled, Finding Home After Family Betrayal. So we'll be back with more of NBL in just a moment. A program brought to you by Cornerstone Bookshop. And yeah, they've been in lockdown, but Cornerstone Bookshop is now open. All right, let's get back to it here. And thanks again to Kathy Isaac and Joni Brousseau for joining us. Kathy's author of the book called Don't Tell. It's subtitled, Finding Home After Family Betrayal. And uh, Joni Brousseau had an absolutely horrendous upbringing in the sense of the kind of trauma that she endured even in her own home. Um, it's a story of brokenness and betrayal, but ultimately God's redemption and the restoration of her life and her story. So, Joni, uh, let me ask you to just kind of describe your childhood a bit, because I think if I remember from reading several chapters of the book um, earlier that that when you were raped by your father, it was not the first time that you'd had any kind of sexual contact. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, you may have even been a survivor of sexual abuse. Yes. Tell us about it. What, um, what was your childhood like? What was going on? Um, my father, unfortunately, was um, lost many jobs. And so when I came home from school, my mother was working two jobs. And I was alone with my father, and he was an alcoholic. And when I got home from school, that's when things happened. Mm -hmm. My sisters, I have three sisters, but they're 10, 11, and 12 years older than me. So I was kind of raised as an only child. So, unfortunately, it was when I would go to bed at night, I would hide. In fact, I even went outside my window and hid outside on the roof trying to be away from him. And um, it just felt like he always found me. Wow. And I will say that he was always drunk when it happened, but that didn't always give him an excuse. Well, I was going to ask the question, do you think, by the way, this would not excuse his behavior, but I was going to ask, do you think he blacked out and wasn't aware of what he was doing in those moments? But then the book is called Don't Tell, and there were periods of time where he got in your face and said, if you ever tell anyone, you're going to lose your family. So he, You're going to lose your family. Yeah. So what did, what did he mean, that he was going to take the lives of your family members or that you would be kicked out of the family or he was going to kill you? What, what did that mean? It meant that I that everybody would leave me, that no one would believe me, and you and that's and you exactly him? what happened. Yeah. Yep. Kathy, I'm curious. Did you have an opportunity to talk to any of Joni's siblings? Anyone else who was familiar with the story? I wasn't able to speak with any of Joni's siblings or family. Um, just people who have known Joni um, since. She became a Christian, and actually, um, to um, Dick and Graham, they um, they are integral parts of her story. So even before she became a Christian, mm -hmm. and um, they were able to give me a lot a lot of insight to um, Joni's life um, prior to knowing Jesus. Who, who I haven't you? spoken to my sisters in twenty seven years. Oh my. Who, so, and is that for a reason? Are they upset that you became a Christian? Yes. Really? Yes. The, you, my psychiatrist said that it's easier to, to shun the family member that's causing the problems than it is to deal and confront it. And my father denied it when, when I told. 
and I was shunned by my family. My mother died after I hadn't seen her for 25 years. And I found out nine months later by an email. Uh, say that again. I, mi- I missed part of what you were saying there. My mother I hadn't seen for 25 years, mm-hmm. and she passed away. Okay. And I found out about it through an email from a sister nine months later. Oh, my. So let's get this straight. You were abused by your father, raped by your father, had his child at the age of, I think, 15, placed that child for adoption, began to get some healing, some assistance from professionals to be able to deal with what you were trying to cope with, and because you brought this to the light, you were the one who was shunned. Yep. So in a way... He was correct that if you told the truth, you'd lose your family. This was a co- family. This was costly for you. Oh my. Yes. My. Yes. Kathy, how do you deal yeah, with so how do you deal with that in the story? Because there's a lot of stuff to unpack in that. Yeah, and that happened over a long period of time. Um, the whole losing her family. So um, there were years that she was kind of estranged from her family. And then when her father was actually um, ill and dying, she was asked to come back and care for him, um, which she did. And that just kind of set her um, spinning, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, yep. and, and that's where she ended up in jail and put into psychiatric care. And that's where everything came out. And um, he denied it. And she did lose her family um, twice over, I guess, because she lost it first when she left right. to be away from him. And then she lost it again when she came back to care for him. Wow. Um, and then it was um, a short time after that that she found Jesus and she found the real good father. And um, he was... Well, it wasn't a short time, Kathy. Her father. It wasn't until I was 40. That yeah. was a ways. Yeah. I had to go through a lot of other crap in there before I hit 40. All right. So, but, Joni, somebody might ask you, like, having endured this and having not yet come to Jesus where you could experience what real forgiveness looks like, why would you go back and care for the man who was so abusive towards you? Because my my memories were spotty. I um, went through a lot of disassociation as a kid and um, where I would kind of go away from my mind when things were happening. Mm -hmm. So I didn't remember if what I was remembering was the actual truth. But I always wondered who else would have been the father of my child because I knew in my mind that he was the only one Yet there's a whole, di- I don't know if the word is dichotomy, but you love your father, you know? Right. He loved me, and well, that was very hard. And yeah. that, I mean, that's a questionable statement in the minds of some of our listeners. You have to understand, people are saying, well, if he loved you, how could he possibly do it? But on the other hand, he's your dad. You don't have another biological father, and your heart and your mind want to love your dad, but... He had done these brutal things to you, so yes. no question there was turmoil going on inside your heart and your mind. Um, Kathy, and the worst part was that he was a Catholic, and he would go to church in the morning. After waking up with a hangover, he would go to church in the morning, and I was like, "Yeah, there cannot be a God. So you're right. Needless to say, you had to be pretty confused about the whole concept of God and whether or not God was loving First of all, did he even exist if, if this was happening? And, and did he love you if this was happening to you, right? I mean... Yes. Man, talk about being... Uh, to having everything stacked against you before coming to faith in Christ, and yet God is able. Kathy, how, how did you go about describing this part of the story? Because somewhere along the line, this couple, Dick and Graham, come into the conversation and obviously they were instrumental in helping to get Joni from where she was at to a place where she could begin to consider the things of God. Um, 
talk about that season in Joni's life as you understand it. Yeah, and um, first I just want to say that God created us so beautifully that when we go through trauma in our life, our body can take us, remove us from that trauma, and that's what what happened to Joni. So the, the abuse didn't really start when she was 14. It had started when she was eight, but she had been removed from it. She disassociated from it, mm-hmm. um, and, and it wasn't until many years later that she was able to unpack all these boxes and put them all back together again. Um, and, and Dick and Graham, yes, they were instrumental in, in that. Um, they were, um, Joni worked with Dick, and um, he kind of brought her into his family. With, with Dick and Graham kind of took her in right from the beginning. And then for years, they hadn't seen each other again and, and ran into each other in a park. And it turned out that one of the other caregivers for Joni's father was somebody from their Bible study group. And that's how they kind of reconnected. And when Joni was thrown out of her house the last time, they took her in and just loved on her, Um, just showed her God's Mm -hmm. love. And um, even that... That was kind of God. God shows up in her life throughout her life, and he just doesn't didn't recognize it at first. Um, but Dick and Graham was just one of those times where God showed up in her life, and um, it took a while. But then eventually, she um, she found God on on a bus leaving Dick and Graham's house, actually, um, with a stranger. And um, and realized that um, God was going to accept her right where she was. She didn't have to try to get good enough for God to accept her into His family, um, and that He was going to be her father and work with her through the healing process. It's an absolutely miraculous story, Joni. Let me ask you though, because somebody might just get the idea that maybe you struggled with some hurt and pain so you saw a psychiatrist and that you were doing kind of okay just trying to keep it together because here you you lost your family the first time you left so that you would be safe came back to help your dad and your family disowns you when you start talking about the fact that he had previously abused you so ultimately you're dealing with some mental illness i think there was drug addiction involved there Self, yep. self-harm, self and if I'm not mistaken, you were even contemplating suicide for a time. Just talk about that season in your life for a second, because it was in that environment that Dick and Graham re-entered your life and began to really just love on you, but just prior. Exactly. Describe what life was like for you in that moment. Well, when I was kicked out the last time and I got to Dick and Graham's, I started using crystal meth, and... um pot to come down off it, pot and alcohol, and they were pretty ignorant of what I was doing, Mm -hmm. so I was able to get away with it, Um, but that kind of took me down a tailspin, and I became homeless, and uh, I was on the streets for nine months of the city of Chicago. And, uh, oh, sorry, it just hits me now and again what I've gone through. Mm -hmm. But it was when I had an abortion, I got into a a single resident occupancy and um, to get off the streets. And I got pregnant and I had an abortion and I was at at the end of my line. I wanted to kill myself then. And I had the Right to Die book by Jack Mm Kevorkian. And um, I I had all these sheets that I had printed out saying that this was my intention and that if they found me, I did not want to be revived because all I could think of was that someone was going to find me and I'd be in a 
vegetable state for the rest of my life if they revived me. Mm -hmm. So I waited for Labor Day to come, so there would be three days, and um, I would be able to do it on Friday and definitely dead on Monday. I had a bottle of Jack Daniels, and on Thursday, Dick and Graham called me and told me they left a bus ticket for me at the bus terminal. And they were missionaries, and I thought to myself, oh, my goodness, you know, this is a lot of money for them. I have to be able to, you know, use this. I'll just delay this suicide for another week. So I went, they, it was divine intervention because I went to see them on Thursday where I had planned to do suicide on Friday. Mm -hmm. And... um when I got there, Dick was so instrumental in telling me how he had to go before the Lord every morning for sins that he had done and that he wasn't perfect. And I said, well, I had done the worst sin of all. I had committed murder. And I told him about the abortion. Mm -hmm. And he said, all I needed to do was ask for forgiveness. And then I got the Left Behind book. They gave me the Left Behind book on my way to the Greyhound, Greyhound station. Mm -hmm. So when I got on the bus, I was on the second chapter, and the Lord put a Christian next to me. And when I got to the second chapter, I was like, I don't want to be left behind. It's <laughs> all I have to do. I said to this lady, she saw that I was reading the Left Behind book, and she asked me if I was a Christian, and I said, no, I said, but it says all I have to do is pray this prayer. Is that all there is to it? And she said, yes. And I said, but I don't believe everything in the Bible. There are two parts that I don't believe. And she said, God is going to meet you right where you are. You don't have to believe in everything. You don't have to be cleaned up. He's going to do that for you. And that's how I came to know the Lord. It was at 5.07 p.m. on September 10th of 2000. I remember it like it was yesterday. Wow. 5.07 p.m. <laughs> Praise <laughs> God. That is such an amazing thing. And, and, of course, that was 21 years ago. So God has done a great work in the meantime, and we're going to hear about that in just a moment. I ask you ladies to just hang on for a second, and we'll continue. The book is called Don't Tell. It's the story of Joni Brousseau, and Joni is with us on the, on the air today. Kathy Isaac is the author. She's here as well, and we're going to look forward to digging in even deeper when NBL returns. Kathy, if you want to copy the book, you mentioned it is available at places like Amazon, Cornerstone Bookshop in North York, anywhere else? Um, yeah, uh, um, Chapters Indigo in Canada, I'm not a that soon. Okay. US, and Barnes & Noble as well. Yeah, we got Barnes & Noble here. You got chapters there. Okay. Um, I saw it available at Target, too. Really? Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Huh. All right, yeah. well, it's called Don't Tell, from Kathy Isaac. It's the story of Joni Brousseau, ultimately, but it's subtitled Finding Home After Family Betrayal. NBL will return in just a moment. Our program today brought to you by certified mortgage broker Donna Luchuk in Southern Ontario. All right, let's continue here. Don't Tell is the name of the book we're talking about, but the story really is about Jesus and how he met Joni Brousseau in a very broken time in her life. She had had an abortion, she had been raped by her father at one point, gave that child up for adoption, struggling with drug addiction and mental illness as a result of sexual abuse as a kid, and God meets her in that place and begins the process of delivering her. Kathy, this had to be the fun part of the story for you to tell because it's so totally redemptive, and i got to believe there's a lot of people listening right now, Kathy, that are thinking, yeah, but my story's different, uh, I, I wonder if God could meet me in this place. And I have to believe that you enjoyed writing the redemption part of the story because this is who God is. Oh, yeah. It, it's so much. Um, it's such a wonderful. I, I'm not going to say the end of the story because we're right. still working on the end of Tony's story. But um, it's such a wonderful story of, of redemption. And, you know, it really comes down to it doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter what's been done to you. Um, God loves you so much that he, he sent his son, and Jesus came. He, he took all of the struggle, all of the pain, all of the sin to the cross, and um, you know, he rose again to give us a road to redemption. 
then the spirit fills us. And when the spirit fills us, I tell people, hang on to your hat because you have no idea what you're in for. Mm-hmm. Um, God, God took Sony um, from the deepest pit and um, you know brought her to Africa, brought her first to a family at Judson. So she received a new family at Judson Church in Chicago. Then she goes, um, God sends her to Africa, and she becomes a missionary in Africa. Wow. And um, <laughs> just the things that she does, you know, that God gives her to do in Africa, um, you know, is, is, is amazing. And it was, it was really a fun part to write. You know, struggles don't end. She, you know, there's there's a mid-flight heart attack, and um, literally, you know, literally, <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, struggles don't end when you're part of his family. Wow. But he certainly keeps what he, he is. He is there, hanging on to you, Joni. A mid-flight heart attack. Is there anything else that you haven't been through? I'm just curious. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> I, you, you. I, I mean this tongue in cheek and lovingly as a brother in Christ, but I'm not sure I want to stand next to you during a lightning storm. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh my. You're safe now. You're safe now. <laughs> God is so good. One of, one of my. Yeah. Well, go ahead, Kathy. One of my one of my favorite stories is after several heart attacks, she and she ends up going back into the hospital over and over again. And the one time the doctor says, Joni, what are you doing back here? And she said, clearly God is not finished with me yet. Um, somebody in here needs to know Jesus. And she walks around, um, and, and I think of the little Dr. Sheesh book, um, you know, are you my mother, are you my mother? She walks around, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? <laughs> somebody here needs to find Jesus before I, so I can finally leave this hospital. Wow. <laughs> Joni. I do have something that I want to share. Please do. And then I got more questions for you. Go ahead. When I first became a Christian, I was still smoking and drinking and smoking pot and still harming myself. And how I was able to accomplish getting rid of those was through scripture memorization. So whenever I wanted to do one of those activities, I had to memorize a scripture first. So I wrote down a hundred scriptures, and I would always go to the long ones, and then I would give up memorizing, and the desire to do it had gone away. Praise God. That is such a great idea, and that had to come from the Holy Spirit, because obviously it involved you hiding God's Word in your heart, and by the way, so that you would not sin against him. That's right out of the book of Psalms one and chapter 119. And I had self-harmed for 40 years, oh so my. it is amazing that I was able to take that habit off of my repertoire. Are you able to say what that looked like? What did self-harm look like for you? Yes, I burned. So there was... I would burn, and then I would go to my mother when she came home from her second job, and she would be like, what happened? And she would cradle me and put salve on me and a Band-Aid on me, and that's all I was looking for. Oh, my. Just to be comfort. So you would do that just so that you could receive a sense of comfort in the end? Yes. it was. Oh, yes, yeah, It was to release. That is so sad. Um, we need to take another break. Let's do a quick. We could catch up here just a little bit. We'll be back in a moment and continue the conversation about the book called Don't Tell. It's from Kathy Isaac, writing about the story of Joni Brousseau, and it's about finding home after family betrayal. It's an amazing book. You can get it at uh, Target, at Chapters Indigo, at Barnes & Noble. You can get it at Amazon. We also encourage you to shop at Cornerstone Bookshop in North York, Ontario. Call ahead and ask that they hold a copy for you so that they don't sell out before you get there. Cornerstone Bookshop, North York, Ontario. NBL will return in just a moment. Our program today brought to you by our friends at Tyndale Seminary. All right, let's get back to it. We've got a few minutes left here with Joni Brousseau and Kathy Isaac. Kathy's author of the book, Don't Tell. Today, obviously, putting the spotlight on what Jesus is doing in and through his church. And what a miraculous story of how God has rescued Joni Brousseau from such a painful past and is now using 
her story, her forgiveness, her healing for his glory. But even as I mentioned the word forgiveness, Joni, let me ask you a question. Did you ever come around to a place of being able to forgive your dad or your family? I was able to forgive my mom one Mother's Day. I'll never forget. I was in the shower, and I just really broke down crying because my psychiatrist said that she had to know. There was no way that she couldn't have known. Mm -hmm. And that when I told, I remember that she wasn't shocked. But yet she still sided with him, which was so difficult. Oh, boy. So I was able to forgive her, and I was able to give my father later. It took more time. But God literally brought you to a place where even though, based on everything he'd done, you were able to say, Dad, I forgive you. Did you say this to him personally or after no, he passed he had, away? No, he, he had passed away. But you knew in your heart that you were free of any bitterness you were holding towards him. Yes, yes. Kathy, i got to believe that's why we're hearing the, the joy in her voice, because nobody goes through what she's been through and is able to be yeah. exuding the, the love of Christ, the joy of Christ, unless you've truly forgiven the people that have harmed you. And only God, I, I don't know what you learned about that story, but I'm learning yeah. that God can bring us to that place no matter what's happened to us. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's only God. Um, and I, I kind of identify with Joni's story to a very small bit. I, w I was um, abused as a child um, by a family friend and held on to it for years, but only when I was able to lay it at the feet of Jesus and say, this is not my burden to carry. This is yours. You've taken it here. It's yours. You can have it. And once I was able to give it away, um, that's when I found forgiveness and could truly live for Jesus. Well, amen to that. And I've mentioned many times on the radio program that I was also sexually abused as a child by somebody close to our family. And, you know, so we all have something in common here. Joni, I don't think Kathy or I went through nearly what you've experienced. And yet I know what kind of trauma and, and pain that brought to my own life and how much of my life, especially as a teenager and a young adult, was spent trying to cope with pain that I didn't even realize was bothering me below the surface. Mm -hmm. Um and Kathy, you can probably relate to that. So, Joni, to see you thriving and doing well today, uh, spiritually and emotionally, uh, is a miracle. And we're going to pray for the physical healing as well. But let me just ask you quickly, because we're short on time. You, you've ended up saying, God, I want, to, I want to, you to use this story for your glory. So you've, you've taught in a, a Kenyan school in Kenya. You've spoken to kids. You're... Talk about the desire you have to let this story bring hope to others. Well, there was a young girl at, at Pace where I worked, and it was a school, and she got pregnant by a family member. She was only in eighth grade, and I was able to take her into my house and fellowship with her and love on her and explain to her that the same thing had happened to me and that this wasn't our fault, and that Jesus was in control, and be able to share the love of Jesus with her. Mm -hmm. Kathy, you outline in the book uh, that sin has an impact on others, and surely that's clear in, in Joni's story. But so does redemption, and you make it a point to say that you're different as a result of Joni's story. Now living fearlessly and risking it all, what does that mean? I think it means really embracing what Jesus has for you. Um, the Bible says that um, that we are God's workmanship created in Christ to do the good works which God has prepared in advance for us to do. So he has so many good works planned for us. And um, when we release all of the baggage that we have, and we can focus in on what God has for us to do, it really it, it's about freedom. It's about freedom um, in the past and the freedom to live um, in the future that he has for, like, has planned for us. And it's just living fearlessly and, and not 
not being afraid. Those, you know, the, the sins of our past can't have an effect on us anymore. And it really gives you the, the freedom to, um, to go maybe where, you know, where some people might think it's a scary place to go or to do things. Um, I helped to build a well at Pace Ministries where, where Joni was working. I had no skill or ability in, you know, well drilling. Uh, but again, God gave us, gave me the tools, the people, the resources that I needed to mm-hmm. accomplish His tasks that He had in store. So you also went to Kenya. Yeah, yeah. I um, <laughs> joined Joni in in Kenya many once, times, and one time we were supposed to, but that was when she had her <laughs> midlife heart attack. <laughs> I, wow. I was there, and she wasn't. <laughs> well, Joni, if um, if if just being around you can be so encouraging that uh, a young woman from St. Catharines ends up wanting to go to Kenya to build a well when she has no well-building skills, then I think we're all going to be different as a result of hearing the story of what God's done in your heart and in your life today. And as we get ready to close, I would love to be able to pray for you uh, physically, because I know that your heart has been an issue, not only from the heart attack, but... Um, that it's continuing to give you some trouble, and, and I would love the opportunity to pray for you about that. But anything else that we can add uh, in terms of your story uh, or what Kathy's written here? Um, Kathy, I want to pray as well that this book gets into the hand of as many listeners as possible because it's got life-changing truth included in it. Uh, but anything that you would like me to pray about as we close here? No, the, the heart is the main problem. Okay. Kathy, anything you want to add? Just that this story will, that God will use this story to speak to people, to um, soften people's hearts for him. Because like I said, um, God was was there. His light was shining in Joni's life throughout her life, and she just didn't see it, so that people would open their eyes and see Jesus through this book. All right. Uh, if you want to connect with Kathy Isaac, you can do that at K-A-T-H-Y, Kathy.Isaac.com, and Isaac is spelled in the biblical way, the Old Testament Bible character Isaac, kathy.isaac.com, or uh, on Facebook at Kathy Isaac Neos Life, N-E-O-S-L-I-F-E, at Kathy Isaac Neos Life, I think is that yeah. correct. But Lord, and it's Kathy Isaac, one word, dot com. It's not kathy.isaac, it's Kathy Isaac. Okay, on, uh, on Facebook. Otherwise, the website is kathy.isaac.com. Okay. No, the website is kathyisaac.com. Oh, it is? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, what I'm looking at here has a dot in there, so I'm sorry about that. Okay, Kathy oh. Isaac. Oh, sorry. I'm like... Yeah, kathyisaac.com. My bad. All right, uh, Lord, I, I just want to lift this whole thing up to you. I'm thrilled that we've had the opportunity to, to let your name be glorified today, God, because by all accounts, Joni Brousseau shouldn't be here. She survived tremendous abuse as a child and as a young adult, and then to be disowned by your family for wanting to tell the truth. This don't tell idea is powerful and it's pervasive, but God, you're the God of truth. Lord Jesus, you said you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life, and you're big enough to handle whatever mess any of us might be going through. So I think about the people that are listening today who could be encouraged by this book. I pray that they'll get their hands on a copy. And if nothing else, God, just remember that that they too are loved by God, that you're meeting them in their place of need, just as you met Joni Brousseau on that bus that very day at 5.07 p.m. when she gave her life to you, Lord. I believe it was September 10th of 2000. We rejoice in that reality that Joni knows you. And God, I pray for continued healing emotionally and spiritually in her life and for physical healing as well. God, she suffered a great deal with problems with her heart. You're, you're the, the great physician. You're the God who sees us through all of this. You know our end from our beginning, and God, you're the one who knit us together in our mother's womb. So I pray for total healing in Joni's life. I thank you for all that's been accomplished for your glory, and I pray for hearts to be transformed today, Lord. If somebody can go through what Joni went through and have joy in her heart and in her mind and in her voice and be able to communicate that joy to others about the importance of of knowing Jesus, then, God, you can do anything. You're the God of the impossible, and we praise you today, and we lift up the name of Jesus as a result. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Amen. So so let's get this straight. KathyIsaac.com, and then on Facebook, and that's the website, on Facebook, it's at Kathy Isaac Neo 
and then the, the letter S, ne- and then the, the letter L. Neo's Life. Yeah, Neo's Life. At Kathy Isaac, Neo's Life, Life on Facebook. Yeah. Um, okay, Don't Tell from Kathy Isaac. Get a copy of Cornerstone Bookshop or a Christian bookstore near you or from Amazon. Order it today. God bless you both. Joni, thank you for being here. Kathy, thank you for being here. Look forward to talking to you guys again sometime soon. Thank you. Look forward to that, too. Thank you so much for having us.